<laughs> Raj Gumir, Punch Out Boxing. Delighted to be here with another duo, uh, Mark Nielsen and John Trathiri. Or should it be the other way around? I'm not going to get into that, but you both put on a hell of a show. Uh, three debutants. Which one of them uh, can call you either most? I'll start with you, Mark. Oof. You know, Husky, they called him, didn't he? Because he sort of, he's got a problem with his voice. But um, I don't know, it's difficult to pick. They were all very good. You know, I think just, just the class show. I think um, these debuts are great, you know, because they get a big crowd. They have to, they're, they're nervous. But, you know, they, all the guys we've had on tonight are quality amateurs, you know, sort of English champions, multinational champions and stuff like that. So, you know, it's just difficult to pick, really, for me. I wouldn't want to pick one, would you? If I had to go with one, I'd probably go with Ross. You know, they, they were all good, as he said. I think he got a stoppage. He did a bundle of tickets, which always makes us happy. Oh, yeah, and he, do you know what? He, he smiles all the time. I only met him a couple of days ago, like first time. Just doesn't stop smiling. Really, really good. Good performance, polished. But the whole card, as you said, I'm sure you'll ask questions. But I'm happy with that. I'm sure Mark is as well. It was a good card and a great final fight. Yeah, absolutely. Before we come to that, um, young Rob Vincent. Every young pro is going to have to come through a crisis. I was strangely impressed, though, because got dropped heavily in the first. But composed himself, got the job done. As we saw last night, what can happen with a young fighter the first time they, you know, come, come across, uh, you know, some problems in the ring. It can go easily very wrong. Yeah, absolutely. And he, and he came back. He'll learn a lot from that. You know, these sort of... Um uh, 60, 54 wins and whatever, you know, th th there's only so much they're going to learn from that. So when they, you know, when he's starting to step up into these title fights and eliminators, he's going to be finding real live opponents who are very good and very schooled. And he needs this kind of experience because he's going to be in the trenches in some of these big fights in the future. And that will help him because now he's, he's been on the, you know, he's, he's been on the deck. He's been under pressure. He's recovered. He's come back. And, you know, yeah, that was really good for him. So that's a really good learning fight for him tonight. Did you concur? Yeah, he said it all, really. I think that's his eighth fight now. He's 8-0. No, all eight fights been with us. You need them tests. He's gone down. He ain't gone down before. If you just go in with another 60-54, as Mark said, he ain't learned much. He'll probably go home like wiping his wounds tonight, going, I've got knocked down. I've disappointed. I've let my fans down. Rubbish, rubbish, rubbish. He hasn't. He needs those tests and tick the box. And you know what? Fair play to him. He came back and won all the later rounds because that was the first round and it could have completely like rattled him and he might have lost a few more and lost the fight or draw, draw, drawn it. But no, he did great. Fair play to him. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, those of us who've followed this, we know every fight has had some, some dodgy fights on the way up. Um, but uh, what weren't dodgy? What about that uh, <laughs> that final fight between Billy the Kid and uh, uh, Asinia there? For the last four rounds, they just decided to stand in front of each other and see who will be left standing. And they both were. We always give you great fights. It wasn't just that one, but that was the headliner. It was for a Commonwealth and English Eliminator. Uh, I felt Billy was working harder. I felt his engine, he came on stronger later. He maybe lost a couple of the early rounds. Uh, Asini was really awkward. You know, he's quite stylish. Almost at times, I felt he's been a bit lazy, not having to dig at him. You know, he won it fair and square. The referee gave it out. It was a very close fight. Uh, let's see what they say. I wouldn't mind playing that back. I mean, that's if Asini and that lot won it. But great fight and a, a good one for the final one of the night. Mark, happy with the uh, referee score? Yeah, I think that's probably about right. I don't think he could get to Asini in the first few rounds. Asini's experience shone true, didn't it? You know, the young guns in there just full of energy, just trying to hunt him down. But while he was, you know, trying to stalk him, Asini's just building up the points wins, you know, building up the rounds. Um, it got a bit sort of like a bit more, more, more even later on. And I don't think Asini liked those body punches. So I think they had a bit of a change of tactic and that started to work well for him. But, you know, it's a... Good, good, good fight for Asinia. He's been there, he's done it, and he's still obviously got it. It's a big fight ahead. You know, the um, Commonwealth were here tonight, and they're saying that they'd um, um, they'd sanction a final eliminator between Asinia and Jordan Reynolds, and that's a tidy fight. But of course, the rematch could also be on the cards. So I don't think I'm, I'm hearing that Billy didn't have a great camp. Had might have been like a little finger injury or something like that. Hasn't trained brilliantly. I think he'd like to, to, to run that back again. And I think the crowd would certainly like to run that back again. So there's some good options for both guys there. Yeah, both men's uh, stocks gone up. Uh, what can we expect uh, next week um, back here? I mean, the headline as a banger. I was there for the both men's debut, the, that cruiserweight fight. That, I think you put that on, wasn't it, in Grey's? Yeah, yeah, look, that is a rematch from the first time they fought. It's a great fight. It's a title fight. The card should be just as good as this week. We've got a double bubble next week. we got it here first on TalkSport and Fight Zone. 
after that it goes over to Texas that we're really proud about. It's our first show we've done aboard. We're doing that with Dennis Hobson, obviously, in Fight Zone. They're leading that. So uh, we've got about 11 hours live boxing across Fight Zone and Talks Ball, all Nielsen, TM14, and Fight Academy. So we're really proud of that. But that headline fight is a banger between D Vaughan and Lewis Oakford, with yet again a full undercard of local talent as usual. Good card. Mark, how do we uh, not overdose on boxing? <laughs> oh, you can't, can you? I mean, we just love that. We live it. We breathe it. It's in our blood. And, you know, if you see Nielsen boxing in TM14 on the, on the poster, you know you're going to get nights like that. We, we you know, we, we, we're we running this York Hall, mate. I mean, you know, we're, we're putting on great shows. The fans are just never disappointed. The matchmaking is bang on. And we can see from some of the, you know, some of the results that have gone on other shows recently, you got to get that right for the boxers and for the fight fans. And we, we certainly... And we certainly... Well, Billy. Yeah, to see you, mate. Good to see you. Um, you know, so yeah, it's just onwards and upwards, and we got like uh, another four or five shows before the end of the year, and we're just be busy, busy, more of the same. It's That's almost five fights in five weeks, I think, pretty much. Wow, yeah. Almost a religious experience coming here, isn't it? <laughs> it's, it's the iconic your call. Gentlemen, thank you so much. Um, yeah, I'm lost for words as often um, after these uh, headliner fights that leave us breathless. So, uh, well, let's recover and uh, I'll see you next week. Cheers, Rashid.